Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Garten, and I am really excited to be working with Ghostlight TV to produce my weekly cooking show, Cook Honey, where we explore the connective powers and creative powers behind food. When I had originally reached out to Ghostlight TV, my plan was to do a poetry hour. As a local poet, I would gather other local poets and we would read poetry or recite other people's poems. However, as Christopher Daniels and myself began talking about producing this poetry show, our conversation took a philosophical turn and kind of an unexpected deep philosophical term, a turn where we began exploring the ideas of what it looks like to be a creative in the apocalypse or in a pandemic situation like we are now. We began to question things like, is there a space for creatives to create in this environment? Or could creatives create in the world of not knowing, not knowing where the money might come from, not knowing what to create or where to produce work, or just not knowing when all of this is going to end? Personally, as a creative, I thrive in these sort of environments. I think it's why I've always loved like apocalyptic or dystopian literature, because I really truly believe that humans are inherently creative. We are creative beings from birth and that necessity breeds creativity. So in environments like this, our, just creati our creativity just explodes and bounds forward. And so I often find myself thinking of creative ways to do things. So I need to repair a piece of clothing. How am I going to do that? Or this broke and how do I fix that? But ultimately in this conversation, I realized that one of the places I've always felt the most creative is in the kitchen cooking. I've never really been a recipe user. I kind of just go in the kitchen, cook for my tastes and my flavors. And I think a situation where we're um, social distancing or quarantining, it lends to that. I only have so much food in my cabinet. Actually, my food order doesn't come in until Tuesday. So there's a good chance um, I might not have the ingredients I need. How do I cook in response to that? And how do I just kind of creatively cook and cook some of those staples, those basic things that we can dress up, change, and manipulate that might already be in our pantry. So let's get cooking, honey, because today's episode, we are gonna be talking about that number one apocalypse staple. She's serving rice, honey. My first introduction to cooking with rice was a childhood attempt at rice pudding. I had steadily been working my way through my grandma's Better Homes and Gardens cookbook, uh, the custards and pudding section, and the house smelled heavenly. I was so excited. It was just this aroma of cinnamon and that warmth of just ooey gooey rice. And I couldn't wait to serve it to my grandma and her neighbors. There was this group of ladies who got together every day and sat on the patio and just spilled the tea about everything going on in the apartment complex. So it was finally time for me to serve this pudding I had been working on all day. I plated it up, I sat it out there, and I will never forget the laughter and smiles on their faces as they dug in because Miss Rose scooped up some of this pudding and through the sounds of crunching, the sound you never want to hear while eating a pudding, she says, Joe, I think you could have cooked the rice a little bit longer. I was humiliated and um, I just never cooked rice since then. I was afraid. I didn't want to ruin it. I was like, rice is too difficult. I don't want to spend money on a rice cooker. I'm not trying to cook rice again. And it actually um, wasn't until I got a Filipino partner that I learned a lot about rice. Rice is an extremely versatile ingredient and can be used in so many ways. And it's such a staple in so many people's diet. So I think it's a really valuable thing to learn. And I remember he said, if you're going to be with a Filipino, I have to teach you to cook the most perfect, steamy, fluffy white rice. And that he did. And I'm going to share that with you today. Now, because this is the first episode, that introduction was really long. But let's go ahead and get to our first cooking segment. Ooh, she basic, honey. So to talk about cooking the perfect rice, we have to talk about what is the right rice variety. Now, in the container to my left, I have short grain rice. 
and the container to my right, I have long grain rice. Let's talk about long grain rice first. Long grain rice is probably the most versatile of the two main sort of grain types. And in an apocalyptic setting, it's going to be the first one to fly off the shelves. You know, my partner and I had to go to the store to buy, you guessed it, rice. And when we went to the store, we were not able to find any large bags of long grained rice. Um, I actually, we usually buy 10, 15, 20 pound bags. I actually had to settle for one of those like little two pound uh, bags of rice, which are not gonna get you anywhere if you eat rice with many of your meals, like we do. However, we were able to get a 20 pound bag of short grain rice, and there were still a ton of varieties of short grain rice available. Why is that? It's because long grain rice is the rice you often get with Chinese food, Indian food, Mexican food. It's the rice you use to make your Spanish rice or Mexican rice. And it's because it has a lower starch content, which means it's able to kind of soak up and marinate with those sauces without getting too mushy and overly sticky. Now, in this container, we have the short grain rice. Short grain rice is uh, way more common in Japanese cuisine. It is your sushi rice. This is the rice um, that they use to make your sushi, your sticky rices, things of that nature. Why is it called short grain rice? Because it is shorter and fatter than long grain rice. I feel quite attacked right now, but it has a higher starch content which means that those starches are really gonna create this sticky um, gooiness that's kind of natural with this rice, which is why it's used in Spam masubis, um, in Polynesian cultures, or uh, in Asian cultures it's used for your, your uh, sushi because it kind of glues everything together and holds everything together. Now, uh, because of COVID-19, I've had to use a lot of short grain rice in place of my long grain rice because it's just too hard to get long grain rice, and it's actually worked. So. Today we're gonna cook short grain rice. We're gonna steam some short grain rice. Um, and it's actually very similar to cook and steam um, the two of these. So that's what we're gonna get to today. Cooking white rice is really basic. You only need three things. Rice, water, and a cooking vessel. Step one is to simply measure your rice. This is one cup of short grain rice. Always cook your rice in one cup increments. You can do two cups, three cups, four cups but it gets a little tricky when you start getting to half and quarter cups. So just for the best results, cook your rice in one cup increments. Step two is to wash your rice. Don't look at me like that, girl. I know you think I'm crazy, and no, this isn't no COVID-19 CDC recommendation. Wash your rice is a cooking recommendation, and that's because these little kernels of rice have dried starch on the outside. So you're going to need to wash that off. No, you do not use soap and water. And when I say wash, I really mean rinse. You're gonna go ahead and stick your kernels in the pot you're cooking in. You're gonna go ahead and take some warm water. You're gonna zhuzh those around under the sink. I like to just fill the pot with water, use my fingers, zhuzh, 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 and she's done. Just like I do my hair in the morning, a little zhuzh, 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 with the rice, you're gonna zhuzh, zhuzh, zhuzh. You're gonna wanna do that three times. Water, zhuzh, drain, water, zhuzh, drain, and one last time, water, zhuzh, drain. Three times should be efficient. I know some people who will wash until it is clear. That is doing too much work. Three times is enough to eliminate those starches to have really quality cooked rice. The next step is to measure your water. Now I think this is the part that really intimidates and scares people is the water and rice ratio. It's quite simple. So. For long grain rice, it's going to be a one to one ratio. One cup of long grain rice to one cup of water. For short grain rice, because it has the higher starch content, I do like to bump it up a quarter of a cup. So for short grain rice varieties, I do one cup of rice to one and one fourth cup of water. Now, I know some of you did not pay attention in math, so that one to one ratio throws you off. I've heard some people doing two cups of water to one cup of rice. You don't need to do that. You're gonna have a lot of leftover water in your pot. For perfect steamed rice, one to one ratio. That's one cup of water, one cup of rice. That's it, that's it. Now step four is the easiest, cooking your rice. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, and some of you watching this are like, rice is easy, I have a rice cooker, I pop my rice in there, I set the button, and it does it for me. And that's fine and dandy when you have a rice cooker. But 
a lot of people don't have rice cookers, so they're not using rice on a regular basis or understanding how versatile it can be. Uh, we used to use a rice cooker and actually we have found that our instant electric uh, pressure cooker, I'm not going to say the name of it, but you know which one I'm talking about, it cooks rice perfectly. Simply do my one to one ratio in the pot, set it to high pressure and to cook for one minute. Then I let it decompress for 10 minutes naturally and then I have perfect steamed rice. But today we are going to cook steamed rice in a simple pot from a lid. Now don't come for me because I know this pot looks a little bit busted. She's an old girl but she still works. We need to stop worrying about uh, having nice fancy things. We should be using these pots until you simply cannot use them anymore. I mean she's on her last leg but she will make some delicious steamed rice so give her a chance. Okay don't come for me and my uh, busted pot. Okay you do need a lid. Uh, this recipe does require that your pot has a lid. So let's remove that lid and let's go ahead and get started. It is super simple to make rice. Step one, put your washed rice in the pot. Sorry, I'm trying to get better at uh, looking at the camera. I like to look at myself on the screen when I'm filming these, but uh, yes, yes, she's beautiful. But I need to be looking at the camera so it feels like I'm connecting with you. Um, it's a little bit awkward though because you know you're staring at this little dot um, but uh, it's not gonna make the, the video really connect. So I've put my washed rice just in this pot and then I'm gonna take my one and a quarter cup of water because I'm doing short grain rice. See I was looking at the screen again. Uh, because I'm doing short grain rice I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in there and then just give it a little stir just to make sure that all the water is around all of those lovely kernels. Now it's simple. I'm going to come over here to the front of this uh, cooker here and I'm going to set the temperature. I'm going to start it and set the temperature for high. And I'm going to bring this rice up to a boil. So that's step one. You're simply going to just mix the rice and the water and bring it to a boil. Just that slight sort of bubbly goodness. I like to stir occasionally because especially um, this cooktop uh, and the pot's not as thick as I would like. I usually like to use a nice thick pot when I'm making rice. So it's going to be a thinner pot. So I do want to stir a little bit while I'm doing this so those kernels don't stick to the, to the bottom. You probably didn't hear that. I swallowed my words. And as always, I always like to cook with a drink. Doesn't always have to be alcoholic. Doesn't always have to be alcoholic. Um, this is just a little bit of caffeine to get me going. A little irony for you guys. So these induction cooktops are pretty brilliant. Like, it's already bubbling. And we're not even a minute in. Um, I timed it the other day because I do things like that. I can, um, like, boil water in, like, less than two minutes. It's pretty great. So I'm just give that a little stir. The neighbors are walking by and the window's like right here and they think I'm nuts. It's great. So already the water's gotten hot. You can see some steam starting to come off a little, a little rice facial moam. Um, it's bubbling. And you'll notice that there'll be some starch. Even though we washed it, you're gonna see some starch, especially with that short grain rice, start to go. I'm gonna give this one nice little stir and when you have a good, decent bubble, it doesn't need to be extremely rolling, but when you have a good, decent bubble, you're gonna go ahead and pop your lid on. So here's my lid, pop that on, make sure it's tight, and I'm gonna turn this down to the lowest temp. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook my short grain rice for 15 to 18 minutes. If it's a thin pot like this, 15 minutes, or you're gonna have some deep stickage on the bottom of the pot. For long grain rice, I'm gonna cook it for 18 minutes, okay? You're gonna to have to test this a little bit out in your own kitchen, in your own environment, how your stove works. Your rice might need the 18 minutes. Uh, your pot might be thicker or your stove doesn't get as hot as this uh, surface does. So you're really going to have to make rice a couple times to figure out what, what works best for you. For me, 15 minutes in this is going to be perfect. And uh, if it was long grain rice, I'd only do 18. So while we wait the 15 minutes for this rice to cook, I'm going to go ahead and put my dishes in the sink to do, and we're going to go have a little sip, sit on my couch, 
and we're gonna see what's the tea, honey, and we're gonna get a little truth out here. Today's question, of course, is about rice. I said, what is your relationship with or understanding of rice? Here are some of the responses I received on social media. I would like to start with Mona Young, who says, my dad is from China. We had a pot of rice from the 60s rice cooker every dinner. It didn't matter if mom made it spaghetti, we had rice. We bought it in 50 pound sacks. We had a barrel of it. I remember going into the grocery stores to order those bags. We lived in mostly very small towns. It felt like a weird stereotype to move to a tiny isolated town and get huge bags of rice. I swore I'd make only pasta and potatoes when I grew up. Fast forward, I still love rice. My mom taught me how to make delicious food and every ethnicity to go with rice. It's a perfect base for any gravy, sauce, stew, or soup. It's true comfort food for me. Thanks, Dad and Mom. She also then added a response later, which is kind of a funny story about how she had a boyfriend in college who uh, taught her how to cook rice on the stovetop because she had always made rice in the rice cooker. So thank you for sharing your stories, uh, Mona. And that's one thing I love from these is a few people gave me some really great stories um, here's another one that I love. Uh, MJU Bondo writes, Rice is a requirement, a lifestyle, an act of compassion. Rice brings everything together. It's the side dish that can hold all other dishes within it. It's a blank canvas for flavor and culture, savory and sweet. It does it all. I'm Filipino, so my relationship with rice is a bound, is, is, sorry, I'm Filipino, so my relationship with rice is as bounded as family. It was around for almost every meal, pressed between my fingers, sandwiching a piece of salty fish. Whenever I get sick, my dad blames it on the lack of rice. Every time I visit my parents' house, they send me home with a doggy bag of stuff. Now that I have a kitchen of my own, I eat it less, better understanding glucose and other adult things that make life less fun. But there will always be certain foods that taste empty without it. Fried chicken, salmon, singang, bengas, soy sauce, a fried runny egg. Thank you for that, uh, MJ. Uh, and sorry if I mispronounced most of those words, but I did my best, I promise. Yvonne Allen comes in with rice equals good. A very simple story. Uh, Joe Daniel Montalongo also shared a story, which I love. He says... I always thought I loved rice, but it turns out I don't. I love my grandma's rice. Every time I would visit, she had this whole pan of orange rice prepared for literally only me in some ham quesadillas. And I would sit with her as she watched me devour everything and we would talk and catch up. Every time I order rice, I refuse to cook. I am looking for that feeling, but it never comes and I, always, and I am always let down by rice. My grandma passed away and I was sad for her absence and the fact that I have never enjoyed rice since then. I think it's beautiful, some of the responses I got. I think one of the things I love is that food runs deep uh, in us as people and some of the most simple food ingredients like rice is something that is embedded in culture and tradition and life and we see it in the hearts of these people. And I think everybody has a story about um, rice, Kate, uh, Katie Nicole McDowell says, Wild rice was always my favorite th thing growing up. It holds childhood ties. I also remember my mother making white rice with cream and honey as a sweet treat. I still make it every now and then as a comfort food. So food, especially in this time, I think we need comfort. Food is comforting. It makes us feel good. It makes us feel better and remind us of purpose. Life is our fuel. Our uh, food is our fuel for life. And it is always a constant reminder of, of life and living and, and pushing forward no matter the circumstances. I love that rice is so simple and can take on whatever you want it to be. It's the ultimate improviser. Um... And that's beautiful. It can feed a family. It can feed a person. It, it's been used to feed armies and conquer the world. So I, I think we can't underestimate that. And speaking of 
conquering the world, I thought it was interesting that some of these posts took um, not only just the story approach, but a political approach. Jessica Levity Daylover writes, I always hated rice. I thought it was the most useless food. I couldn't understand why people loved it so much. I would proudly declare my hatred of rice to the world, even when not asked. When eating Asian food, I couldn't fathom why anyone would get rice over lo mein. In high school, my friend dated this exchange worker from Africa who lived in a one-bedroom apartment with six other guys. They slept on the floor and ate bags of rice for every meal. Because it was so cheap and abundant and feeling, filling, sorry, I realized my hatred of rice was that of privilege. As an adult, my taste for food has changed. I don't know when it happened, but I finally understood the glory of rice. I scored a rice cooker at a thrift store and found a deeper love of perfectly cooked rice. Now I try not to eat it because carbs make me gain weight very quickly. Another, another privileged point of view, eye roll emoji. Mm. Um, but this idea of it being a part of culture and privilege, um, Lacey Carrillo writes, rice is a beautiful thing. It comes in 40,000 varieties. Wow. Rice is seen in almost every culture. It complements every cooking method and absorbs all regional flavors. I love rice. It's a staple in my house. And I love trying to master Iranian and Indian rice dishes. It is tedious, but well worth it when it comes out. Tiffany Grass writes, rice is the beautiful material which holds my sushi together, but also prevents me from overeating my body weight and fish. So I love these kind of jokes, but a lot of people commented on the fact that rice is the source of food for so many people in the world, and, and so much of the globe relies on rice um, for a stable. It's affordable, it's accessible, um, and it's filling. Let's go. John Gettner writes, Rice means life for millions of people around the world. Rice, to me, is a way to feed the people and help end world hunger. Definitely essential. Dan Weiss came in with a really um, funny sort of, I don't know, skit talking about the importance of rice. And he writes, Rice is the kind of friend who is down for whatever. Road trip? Sure. I'll bring burritos. Quick lunch with uh, friends you haven't seen in a while. Let's add some raw fish and low sodium soy sauce and have at it. Rice is the friend that you take for granted. Sure, you love rice, but you never call asking how they are. I'll see them next week, I'm sure. What you didn't know, though, is that when ri what rice isn't what you didn't know, though, is that when rice isn't helping you get that last little bit of sauce from the plate of your big... What you didn't know, though, is that when rice isn't helping you get that last little bit of sauce from the plate to your big selfish face, rice is carrying entire economies. Rice works for Doctors Without Borders, uh, from water.org and Chipotle, rice doesn't want any recognition, though, so I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, rice is kind of humble, plentiful, a pillar of the community, one I'm proud to call friend. I can do all things through rice, which strengthens me. So I, I think rice is just this abundant sort of powerhouse for our economies. I think this is a great conversation that's happening. Mona even later, Mona Young again later commented on, I loved this thread. And I think it's such a positive way to think about our food and what food means to us and our relationships uh, with food and what impact it has on, you know, our economy or what impact it has on the global economy or cultures and people. You know, I loved that Jess, uh, Jessica Levity talked about um, privileged perspectives and um, how when we think about rice and we talk about rice, how those perspectives change. For some people, rice literally is life. It's as, it's as important as water. It's what they have to sustain their life. And so I think sometimes we take that for granted as um, especially in a, in a culture where we have so much at our fingertips, fast food, restaurants, we can get food so quickly. 
you know, we don't think twice about that rice in the burrito or that rice underneath the chicken that you threw away in the trash can, you know, by the cups full. Um, but rice really is a staple globally and an important part of our lives and our culture. Um, a few people commented on being sick and how rice was always the thing to comfort them when they were sick. So I thought this was a beautiful uh, thread and I'm really excited to keep this going uh, with each uh, week's food item and see what the tea is, honey, because that's what this is. Food is truth. And that's the tea, sis. All right. so. The rice is just about done with the cooking process. Now I want you to remember, you may call it cooking rice, but really what we're doing is steaming the rice. You want that water in that pot to heat up, roll around. These rice kernels are at the spa now, right now, girl. They are just getting a facial, they're soaking it all in, they're gonna relax. During this cooking process, do not touch the lid at all. Do not take it off, do not move it. They are on quarantine. Leave them in quarantine, let them stay inside their house. They are trying to be safe. So the 15 minutes is up. As soon as your 15 minutes is up, you need to remove the pot from the heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this cooking. And I'm gonna let it rest for five minutes off of the heat. Five whole minutes. I know 15 felt like a long time. In this five minutes, that rice is really gonna plump up, soak up the rest of the water, and really finish that steaming. So, the rice has been steaming for five minutes. So usually what I do when I'm cooking is I just leave it off to the side even more than five minutes. I leave it off to the side of the stove, off the heat, and I go ahead and prepare whatever I'm having with my rice. It could be a grilled meat, uh, it could be steamed vegetables, it can be any anything that I want it to be. So I go ahead and prep all of those things that I'm gonna serve with my rice. Then when I'm ready to serve the meal, that's when I'm going to kind of open up my rice, fluff it, and get it ready to go. So are you ready for the reveal? I'm gonna take the lid off, I'm gonna give myself a nice rice uh, facial, and then I'm gonna grab a fork and we are going to fluff. Ready? Three, two, one. Mmm, just that nice steam. This rice looks beautiful. It's fluffy. Um, there's minimal uh, browning, no browning. So I know that it's not stuck. Some kernels are going to stick just because it's starch. Let me grab that fork and we'll fluff and taste. So to fluff the rice, just take your fork, stick it in, and kind of lightly drag. I like to go around the edges of the pot. This is beautiful rice. Oh, she's perfect nice fluffy zoom mm, okay I'm gonna take a taste mm. why it's nice to do the extra quarter cup of water with your short grain rice is it helps um, alleviate some of that starch so it's not automatically stuck and it gives it the opportunity to soak up any flavors that I may want to put with this now I want to give you guys some ideas of what you can do with this st steamed rice. Again, it can be the bottom layer of any dish. You know, make a delicious grilled meat, stick it on top of your white rice. You can grill, saute vegetables, stick it there. Um, if you have any leftover white rice, the next day it fries up really well into a beautiful, you know, garlic fried rice or onion and garlic fried rice just with some breakfast. You know, you put a little egg on top of that. There's so much you can do here. A lot of people, one, are afraid to use rice uh, after it's been kept in the fridge. I will store in the fridge for a couple days max, and then I can reuse it for a few things. Um, one of them being my favorite is a fried rice. Fried rice is just better with rice the next day. Also, a little cheat, you can kind of re-steam your rice to make it fresh again. Find a bag that you can seal it in, a, a sort of a a locking bag that is safe to microwave. You put about one tablespoon, two tablespoons of water for a cup of rice or a couple cups of rice. Um, sometimes, you know, it can just be a sprinkle, feel how wet it is, and then seal that bag and just put it on for a minute and the bag will puff up and all that steam will circulate again and those kernels will get plump and warm and you won't even realize that you're eating reheated um, white rice. All right, so the next part of the show that I've been really excited to film, it's called You Did What, Honey? That's right, You Did What? So, in the future, um, I might get suggestions from viewers or from my social media, but today I'm just going to use an ingredient that I need to use for my pantry. So the, the concept of this segment is, I'm gonna get a random ingredient, 
and the goal is to try and make a dish using that ingredient and our sort of ingredient of the episode. So today I'm going to use, drum roll please, canned pumpkin. So this is leftover. I found it in the bottom of the pantry, girl, from like two, um, maybe three holidays ago. It's still good. It expires this year in December. So I want to make sure I get it used up. So this is just your canned pumpkin. So my goal is to combine pumpkin, canned pumpkin puree, and rice to make a dish for you. So in this segment, I'm just going to film raw. I'm not gonna overly edit it. I might speed or slow things up because you're gonna just watch me cook with creativity. I'm gonna be making up the recipe as we go, thinking on my feet like I normally cook. Usually I don't cook very recipe oriented. When I'm cooking dinner, it's just off the top of my head. This spice sounds good, that sounds good. So I'm gonna make a dish. And then I'm going to bring my partner in and he's going to do a little taste test for us. And he's going to tell me if uh, it's a slay or a nay. Okay, so he's got to tell me, did I slay it or is it a nay it? So I think the dish I'm going to make is a pumpkin risotto. Um, and why is I want to take this canned pumpkin and I actually want to show you that you can reuse your rice from the night before, the day before, and we're going to do a cheat uh, risotto. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather ingredients, get it ready. Like I said, I'm gonna probably speed and slow this down. I'm not gonna overly edit it, but I want you to kind of see my creativity. I'm gonna bounce back and get spices. So I know I'm gonna have my canned pumpkin. I know I'm gonna need my steamed rice from the other day. Um, I'm probably gonna to wanna to use some chicken broth. Um, or something to kind of get it started. I know I'm gonna need butter because I always put butter. Ooh, another thing I'll put is, where is it? I'm gonna use some of this Italian cheese mix from um, a store. They always are in the tubs. It's like a kind of like nicer cheese, but I didn't realize how great these things are because like this doesn't expire until like July or August. So sealed in my fridge, it can last forever. And I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use some of this cheese. I'm gonna use my canned pumpkin. I'm gonna use this um, and I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna think this through, um, but you know, I know with pumpkin, I like to use normally like sage and I like to use um, nutmeg. And so I'm just gonna play around and we're gonna see what we come up with. So let's get started. <laughs> I didn't have any fresh sage on me and my plant outside is not doing well so I don't want to trim off of it so I thought I'm using pumpkin leftover from the holiday season why not use that poultry seasoning that we all have sitting in our cabinet from Thanksgiving um, I have some salt just in case I need it I have some nutmeg like I said I often like to use nutmeg when I use sage or um, you know cream sauces but also with pumpkin always gonna use some nutmeg there I have my leftover rice here and I might um, add a little scoop of the stuff we just made uh, to make sure I have enough I would like at least two or more solid cups and then I also did not have fresh chicken stock so this is chicken bouillon so I probably won't be using any of that salt because this has all the salt uh, content I need I'm gonna also see, here we go, I'm looking at myself instead of the screen, or instead of the camera. I'm gonna give that a stir, to kind of mix that up. Um, I don't know if I wanna put onion or garlic. I put onion and garlic and I swear everything I cook. Um, I'm gonna need butter, for sure butter and some queso. Let me get that open. <laughs> lots of butter and cheese and if you don't have the cheese you can um, skip it but then you're gonna for sure want butter practice safety that was frozen butter um, for the apocalypse yeah I have to have onion and garlic even if it's just a smidge I just don't feel right with my life 
Don't come for me. I'm a technique because the food tastes good. Don't come for me um, on those things because I am not here to hear it, okay? Um, I'm just a cook, trying to cook a meal, trying to entertain some people while they're in quarantine, having a good time. Let's go ahead and do a couple cloves of garlic. Now, I'm going to warn you, I am going to leave my garlic chonky uh, because, one, we are a household who loves garlic, and my partner loves nothing more than just biting down into a large hunk of garlic. Um, so we are going to have nice hunky garlic inside this risotto. Um, I don't mind it. I actually prefer leaving the garlic um, chopped large because I think it's a little it, it's a little sweeter. I think if you mash it um, too much you can make it a little bitter. Um, I know that it has a lot to do with the age of the garlic as well and this is a course quarantine garlic so I have no idea what we're getting into here but sometimes you just got to use what you use it's one of the benefits of home cooking and not restaurant cooking is I'm not trying to impress anybody um, I'm just trying to cook a good meal for my friends or my family and have a good time doing it and just enjoy myself I'm not gonna overly worry about things because usually if you just follow your taste buds things come out okay. Okay. Rough chopped garlic. All right, I'm really nervous. Um, I do not know how this is going to come out. Also, my partner is like iffy when it comes to squash. So sometimes he likes it, sometimes he does not like it. And so this is going to just be a very interesting experience to see how this goes. So let's go ahead and turn our pot on. I'm going to do a nice medium heat just to get things started. Now, I just got this, and I'm not used to cooking on this um, setup, so I don't want to push it until I'm a little more comfortable. But I'm going to go ahead and start off with my fro frozen butter. Let's get that worked down. I don't, my kitchen, I'm in 600 square feet. This kitchen is small, so I can't be doing like an overhead rig and a, and a side rig. I would have to cook the meal twice, and I, I don't feel comfortable wasting food. Um, earlier, I cooked the, you know, cooked two batches of rice so I could get overhead shot and um, front shot, but I don't want to do that with this. Um, it's just a real waste. We'll use the steamed rice, but I don't want to have to make two batches of risotto. That's just a lot of risotto for us. You know, risotto's rich. It's thick. It's it's pasty. Um, it's so good. It's, it's creamy deliciousness. But it's not something you're going to, like, plow down on a regular basis. So, getting my butter going. This temperature seems okay. I'm going to turn it down one notch. And as my butter is now going, I'm gonna throw in my onion. My onion. Love it. Love the smell of onion. Now this chop is way too big for a risotto, um, but I don't care, it's my risotto. <laughs> and I love onion. And also I'm gonna cook this down to the point where it's just gonna kind of melt in there anyway. So I used half a stick of butter in there because I need that butter, I need that fat because I am going to try my best to wake this rice up a little bit with some steam. I'm gonna put a little bit of this chicken broth in there and my risotto. Now, normally a risotto dish, you start with dry rice and you just add liquid, add liquid, add liquid, add liquid to draw out the starch, draw out the starch. This is a cheetah risotto um, that you can kind of save yourself some time, use some leftover rice for a dish um, that's different. So again, don't come for me. I know this isn't like legit Italian risotto, but one, I'm not Italian. Um, and two, sometimes you just want a quick meal that tastes good. You know, on time, risotto can be very time consuming and, and this is just a quick way and a great way to use your leftovers, you know. Um, with being in quarantine and lockdown in our houses, I, I really think and I hope people are realizing like the importance of using all of your ingredients. All right, in sous um, actually, before I throw my rice in there, let's get some herbs. I'm going to do 
eh, a full teaspoon of poultry seasoning. Okay, get that in there, bring out that. I'm also gonna throw my garlic in now that it's translucent. My t uh, onions are translucent, I'll throw that in. Oh God, I love the smell of poultry seasoning. Sometimes I get on these kicks with spices and this one time I was putting poultry seasoning in like everything I cooked and my dad got furious. What's that spice you keep using? Mm. Oh, so it's just melding, it's melding. Mm, she's thick. Oh, I love this. Now, let's wake up our rice. So I'm gonna stir this again. And I'm gonna put a little bit in there. Dump my nice cold rice. She doesn't want to come out. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this fresher stuff. Actually, I'll use some of the first batch I had to make from the fridge. So remember, rice is really open to flavor. That's a nice way, a euphemistic way of saying it's kind of bland. There's not much there. There is a little bit of that rice taste. You can taste the grain. So, there's about probably two and a half, three cups of rice in here. As you can hear, it's starting to get sticky. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my pumpkin. And I'm going to use only one cup of the pumpkin. I might cave and add a little bit more. We'll see how this goes. Again, I'm cooking to create. Cooking um, to just try things out and smell that pumpkin. She's getting creamy. Let's go ahead and throw in a little more of the chick stock. I'm going to go ahead and turn me down another notch. Oop, making a mess. I mean, let's be honest, would it be me in the kitchen if I didn't make a mess. So as you can see, it's starting to get that nice kind of creamy risotto texture, but I need a taste. Taste your food, taste often. I have gone through, in these creative processes, I've gone through every spoon in my drawer. Okay, we're gonna add the rest of this chicken stock. We're gonna add a pinch of salt she needs it. When in doubt, add salt. Nine times out of ten, if your dish falls flat, you're in need of salt. One thing that I, I've read that we do different from restaurants is restaurants will cook at a higher temperature than we do at home. So they're cooking really quick and they're cooking uh, with way more salt than we're going to use at home. You know, we've been trained to be really afraid of salt, but little do we know they actually use a ton of this. So I'm actually going to bring her back up notch okay mm. she's starting to get creamy I can see my rice kernels breaking down a little bit um, let's go ahead and add some pepper mm. let's add a little nutmeg Probably, don't go overdo it on the nutmeg. I would say like an eighth of a teaspoon, just a little pinch, just enough to make them go, hmm, what is that little extra flavor in there? Mm-hmm, ooh, yes. It's 
So now, le piece de resistance. But before I add this cheese, I actually think I want to give it another taste. Hit another spoon. Mmm, yeah, that's tasty. Let's add that cheese. Mm. So, usually I would just use like Parmesan, but this definitely has um, like a bunch of cheeses in it. I'll have to list that in the write-up for this episode because I don't know what's in there, but it was the only Italian cheese blend I had in my fridge. Hashtag COVID-19 cuisine. Uh, we've been jokingly naming things like COVID tea is like our sangria where you just use that leftover bottle of wine in your fridge. Oh yeah, that cheese is melting. Now, really, <laughs> I think I'm trying to hold back a little bit because I think sometimes I can scare people with my cooking, but I would <laughs> use probably more cheese. I am gonna have to cave, this needs more butter. I think I just need to put a finishing dab of butter to really make it silky and smooth. And then I'm gonna plate it for you guys. Ooh, I'm gonna plate it. I'm gonna put it on a platter. Cheese is still melting. Okay, let's get another dab of butter in here. You know what? It's risotto. I'm going to put the whole half. So yes, that means this has an entire stick of butter. Again, why I didn't want to make two <laughs> batches of risotto, this is going to be quite a rich dish. Mm. So there was some mozz in there. You can see the cheese is getting a bit um, sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this down now just to melt that butter in. Mm. Mm. It's just looking heavenly. You could throw a little cream in here if you didn't want to do more butter, but really, I mean, a good risotto, you want that starch mixed with that fat. This is a dish that comes from the north of Italy where it's kind of cold in the winter and um, you know, it's kind of sweet. I, I didn't even think about that until just now. It's kind of nice to make it in honor. I know that um, Lombardy, where this dish comes from, where risotto comes from, is the region where um, the coronavirus kind of started in Italy. And, you know, although they are making some improvements, um, you know, they had a really rough go of it. So um, I remember watching the video where everybody was on their porch singing the national anthem for Siena, which is Tuscany. But um, that really got me. It was the first place I ever traveled um, abroad was I went on a trip and we went to Italy and a couple other places and um, I fell in love with traveling after going to Italy and um, you know I think it's just the thing with traveling is like that kind of idea of the human spirit. I think humans are just these inherently creative beasts who want to connect and I think you see that vibrancy when you travel. Okay, we're gonna give this a taste. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Oh. oh, she's silky, right level of salt. You can see the smile on my face. This is fat kid heaven right now. Oh, I think she does need another little um, finesse of uh, some nutmeg on there. Mm -hmm. You know, I do want to remind my my eaters that this is a uh, pumpkin, you know, and I think nutmeg really helps that sing. Mm. And there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and plate this up, and there we go. Pumpkin risotto. Mm. Plate this beautiful pumpkin risotto. 
again, normally I would not have used um, something with uh, mozzarella in it because it's going to make it stringy um, and have that stringy effect. But as long as it tastes good, I think that's fine. I'm gonna smooth this out. Actually, let's 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 stipple it, okay? Plate, plate, plate. Uh, I like to try and make things look somewhat pretty. Scoop that in there. And then I have some dried. I finally found some dried sage in my cabinet. It's got the beautiful gray mauve color to it. So there you have it. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and do a taste. Add a spoon. I told you I'll go through spoons. Um, I'm going to get two forks. So, pumpkin risotto. Mmm. You can taste those cheeses. Good sort of salt content. The rice is perfectly cooked, not completely broken down. Some good nutmeg flavor. It's creamy and silky. It's not heavy. Um, the pumpkin gives it a little bit of sweetness, especially because we've kicked it in there. And you can taste that onion and garlic. I'm really glad that I chose to add the onion and garlic. It just wouldn't be a meat dish without onion and garlic. I could continue eating this. So I'm going to eat this. And um, now it's time for the review, and I'm a little bit nervous. All right, I'm here with my partner in crime, Ross Burgos, and it's time Hello. for Slay or Nay. Are you ready? Sure. I grabbed your favorite fork, hoping <laughs> it'll help you <laughs> if it turns Reach out to be a nay. Stars. So let's take a bite. Yes. Slay. Slay. It's slay. a slay. Mm -hmm. So it's like you eat this again? It's a dolphin. It's what slay. do you like about it? Well, the texture is nice. What about the texture? It's um, slightly chewy, um, creamy. I mean, that's all I got. Now, it looks like it would be heavy. Does it feel heavy? Absolutely not. No. It has a lot of flavor. Tastes a lot of the garlic, onion. I mean, mm. yeah. Ugh. So you're not always you like squash, but you're always iffy on squash. You're not always the biggest squash fan, right? Right. So what do you think about this? I mean, I want to say it's hard to taste that it's squash because it's a flavor that is not too familiar. <laughs> if you will. So, so yeah. All right, so it's a sleigh, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here. <laughs> it's a sleigh. I'm a little speechless, as you can tell. Did you want to take this? Um. Yeah, take it. Go eat, Joy. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, that was You Did What, Honey? Um, and I used pumpkin puree and some leftover rice to make a pumpkin risotto. So, so my partner brought the risotto back and I wanted to kind of reveal, I think, what the recipe was. I had to go back and think about it. I used a cup of pumpkin puree, about three cups of short grain, already cooked rice that was in the fridge overnight. I used one cup of chicken bouillon. So that was one teaspoon of the bouillon. I used the powder, not the cube, or one cube into one cup of water. There was a quarter of a large onion, so one small onion, um, two cloves of garlic, roughly chopped, and I think it was an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of poultry seasoning, um, an eighth of a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, and I, that was it. Oh, and a quarter cup of Italian cheese blend, and I found out my melty cheese was Asiago. 
um, was the melty cheese in that blend. But you could just use straight Parmesan. Usually that's what you're gonna use is straight Parmesan. You won't get the strings, which you know, risotto usually doesn't have strings. But again, this is just pantry cooking. You know, I grew up definitely not um, sort of wealthy and my grandma was on a fixed income and that's where I did most of my cooking. And so I had to learn to just blend what was ever in the cabinet. So you can make some pretty stunning dishes, some modified dishes if you're willing to kind of just relax and be creative in the kitchen.